Ahlan wa sahlan, marhaba. We are talking about Arabic numerals and numbers today. So if you've got your book, go ahead and open it up to page 71. Now, we have a couple of things going on here. There's two columns that we have. This first column on the left and then this second column to its right. And the Arabic numerals are these actually, which should look very familiar because these are the numerals that we use in the Americas, right? In the East, in the Western world and Europe and so forth. So why are they called Arabic numerals and where do they come from? Well, what we use in, the, in what is now the Western world was originally developed by North Africans, um, by North African Arabs, and it was introduced into Europe by way of Islamic Spain. So if you look at Morocco, for instance, Morocco and Libya and North Africa, right? It's right below Spain. And so there was movement from North Africa up into Spain. And then from Islamic Spain during the Middle Ages, during the 10th century, that was moved in and propagated further on throughout Europe. And then of course, from Europe into the Americas. So that is why we call them the Arabic numerals because they came from Arabs. They came from Arabic speaking peoples who created the system and also created the concept of zero, which prior to the 10th century did not exist in Europe. Remember during the Middle Ages uh, in Europe, where you know what you would call the Dark Ages, many people will call the Dark Ages, it was actually the golden era in the Islamic world. And that included North Africa, of course. We've talked about this before that the Arabic speaking world includes the Middle East, and North Africa. So these numerals that are to the right here that we're also going to learn, these actually originated in India. So they're from the east side of that part of the world, and then they were further developed in the eastern part of the Arab world, right? So from India moving on west into the eastern part of the Arab world. And so we call these the Arabic Indic numerals. Okay. And I'm going to teach you how we write these numerals. And these numerals are still used present day in many parts of the Arab world. But these numerals are also used in many parts uh, of the Arab world. Okay. So what's important to know is that the pronunciation, of course, is going to be the Arabic pronunciation, which is what we're going to focus on in this lesson. And that is going to be informal and written. Okay. Remember, Shami is the Levant and Masri is Egyptian. So we're not doing Levantine and Egyptian, but we're going to do Fusha, the modern standard, the formal way of saying these numbers in Arabic, okay? But when it comes to the writing of these numbers, it's really interchangeable. You could use either or, it just depends on preference. But we are going to learn the Arabic Indic numerals as well so that you can easily go back and forth between the two and do make sure that you recognize these numerals because as you continue on in your journey in studying Arabic, you will see them pretty frequently. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and begin. We have the concept of zero, which comes from the Arabic numerals. And so zero is sifr. Sifr. And the way that we write it is simply a dot. Okay. So in the Arabic Indic a uh, numeral way of writing is going to be simply a dot. Sifr. Sifr. Okay. Wahid. Wahid. Meaning one. Wahid. And what might be easier, let's, let's do it this way and we can put it underneath. Okay. Sifr. Wahid. Looks the same. واحد صفر واحد اثنان اثنان صفر واحد اثنان اثنان صفر واحد اثنان ثلاثة 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 notice ثلاثة starts with a ث 
and it has three syllables. Tha, la, tha. I shall help you remember it. Tha, la, tha. Sifr, wahid, ithnan, and some people say ithnain. Thalatha. Notice it looks like a thalatha on the top and then a line down. Sifr, wahid, ithnain, thalatha, arba'a, arba'a, arba'a. أربعة صفر واحد اثنان أو اثنين ثلاثة أربعة أربعة صفر واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة 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 نورس إتسترس وتا خ خمسة خمسة looks like a zero in the Arabic numerals خمسة صفر واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة ستة 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 yes it looks like a seven ستة صفر واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة ستة سبعة سبعة ع it has the عين which is in our throat سبعة 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 صفر واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة ستة سبعة صفر واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة ستة سبعة ثمانية 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 it's going to be upside down سبعة ثمانية ثمانية also starts with a thought صفر واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة ستة سبعة ثمانية تسعة تسعة starts with a ta تسعة and it also has a a in it تسعة this is easy looks the same تسعة تسعة صفر واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة ستة سبعة ثمانية تسعة last one عشرة عشرة now what's interesting to note is that the Arabic numerals and the Arabic Indic numerals both of them are going to move from left to right. So even though in Arabic we write from right to left, the numerals are written from left to right, like English. Okay. So if we want to write عشرة, 10, we're going to take 1 and 0. And it will look like this. عشرة. Okay. So 10 will be 1 and 0. عشرة. صفر. واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة ستة سبعة ثمانية تسعة عشرة عشرة now you're gonna practice them I'll add it right here so we can see it clearly now one thing that I want to note in terms of handwriting is that in handwriting Ithnan and thalatha, ithnan and thalatha can be written like this, as a straight line and like this. So notice in handwriting or in um, shorthand, when you write thalatha, it looks like ithnan or ithnain in the formal original way of writing. 
That's just a handwritten written preference. Okay, But anytime that I write it or you see it in your textbook, it'll always be in this formal way in which we have ithnan and thalatha. Okay? Okay, let's look at some numbers. If I wanted to write... 153. We don't know how to say it yet, but how would I write the numbers? We would put the wahid and it would go in the same order. Khamsa, thalatha. Okay. If I wanted to write 98, we would put the tisha and then we would put thamania. If we wanted to do 64, what would we do? You can pause and come back. We would do sitta and arba. If we wanted to do 27, we would put ithnan and sabha. Okay. okay. We want to practice writing your birthday. So I want you to look at the numbers. You're going to practice writing your birthday, and then you're also going to practice writing um, the date. You can write the date for today. You can write your birthday. Practice writing your phone number. Write your phone number from left to right. So if we had thalatha wa thalatha, 313 and on, right? If you have your birthday, it's going to be the day, and then the month, and then the year. Okay, so I'm starting with the day, and then the month, and then the year. And you could do it with slashes, like this, or you could do with dashes, like this. Okay, so if our birthday was, for instance, Thanatha, the 3rd of January, What would that be? Oops. Good. 2002. So if someone was born in 2002. Right? So what you're going to do now, you're going to practice saying the numbers. You're going to practice writing the numbers. You're going to practice um, looking at them and recognizing the similarities and differences between, remember, this is the uh, Arabic Indic numerals right here Oops. arabic indic whereas these are simply the arabic numerals okay so one more time صفر واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة ستة سبعة ثمانية تسعة عشرة